Open on the track, money running back. She your audience, the wish you make it clap. Hi everyone, I hope you're all having an amazing week. If you're new here, my name is Danny James and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create your own stylish digital glitch distortion frames within Adobe Premiere Pro. Before you hop onto the video, kindly make sure to check out my digital store at dannyjames.co. The link is down below in the description box. I have some useful digital presets and packs that can take your music video editing to a next level. If you do end up enjoying this video, kindly give it a like and if you're watching my content for the first time smash the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so that you don't miss any of my upcoming content now let's hop on to adobe premiere i have two clips on my timeline which i'm going to be using to demonstrate uh, this effect so simply what you want to do the first thing you want to identify a point in time where you want to have this digital glitch in your video so let's say i want it somewhere around here all you need to do you need to simply duplicate your clip hold alt and drag up now once you've done that let's just change this label color so that you can easily follow this through on your duplicated clip quickly go to your effects controls and look for lumetri color all you need to do just add the lumetri color and then go to the effect controls increase the exposure just by a small bit okay just increase the exposure of that clip and now if you compare with the clip below, you can tell which one has the exposure. You can also increase up to about one. Then next, you can make additional changes. Then let's also increase the temperature for this example. Okay, like that. Now afterwards, go to your effects and look for a crop effect. For this example, I'd like us to create a horizontal sort of rectangle. Go to your effect controls. For this one, I'd like us to crop it from the top and the bottom so let's leave some space about right there okay so at 50 from the bottom seems perfect now you can tell which area of the clip has this exposure now this is simply to help us track this throughout this video and now you need to identify the point in time where you want this effect or this glitch to happen so i'll cut this video around here right on this frame okay so i'll trim it from that up to here okay now next what you want to do you want to create a keyframe for position all right create the first keyframe go 10 frames later so i'm holding shift and my right arrow key twice one two ten frames and then we can move it downwards and then let's go another 10 frames so one two i'm holding shift and my right arrow key to move five frames at once and then I can raise it up once again. And then we're going to be repeating, just creating some arbitrary sort of steps. One, two, okay. And then you're going to drop it down and align it with everything. And then one, two, take it up. Now at this point, you're just doing what you want. And then one, two, there's no one formula for this. Take it down and then one two bring it back to 540 which is in the middle now let's preview that small animation yes that looks good now the next thing you want to do you don't have to create all the keyframes remember you can always copy and paste these keyframes now next I want us to go to our first keyframe for the positioning and add a keyframe for scaling. Now you want to create an illusion such that it gets bigger and smaller at the same time. And then you can follow the keyframes for position. So what I'll simply do, I'll skip one keyframe. So I'll go to the next keyframe for position and then I'll go to the next one. So I'm sort of alternating. I will increase the scaling like that and then i'm following the keyframes for the position so i'll go one two so after another alternate i'll drop it down to a hundred to a hundred sorry and then alternating go to the last keyframe for the position and you can increase it now i want us to copy the keyframes for the position and scaling so that this animation continues but before we do that, let's preview what this looks like. Okay, that's good. 
So one more thing, I'd like us to end up at 100 for the scaling so that it goes back to a perfect uh, sort of symmetry. So I'll create one more keyframe for the position. I'll go one, two, and then adjust the position. And then one, two, put it back to 540 in the middle, such that at that last keyframe, the scaling is also at 100 like that. Now, all you need to do, you need to highlight on all your keyframes, right click and put them on Bezier. Now let's preview this and you can see what this looks like. Yeah. So in case you need this animation to go on, I'll just extend this clip a bit. I'll copy those keyframes, control C, and then it's better if you can copy the keyframes for position only first and then for the scaling afterwards. This should look symmetrical. Let's just preview it. So that looks good. Now, one more detail to add on to this to really sell this effect is to add a VR digital glitch. Go to your effects and look for a VR digital glitch. Add it to your clip. Go to the effects and you can already see what's happening. One thing you want to ensure is that this crop effect stays below everything else. Now for this VR digital glitch, you can leave it as it is. You can adjust some parameters. If you want some coloring on it, all you need to do, you need to go to the distortion and increase the value for color distortion up to 100. And now you'll get some other chippy colors happening on this end. Now to reduce the particles, reduce the POI scale. Okay, you can center them. Again, instead of doing that, disable the property for Auto VR and change from monoscopic to over and under so that these lines are sort of vertical. And just like that, you have something really good going on. Yeah. Uh, one last detail, you can reduce the particles which are on here just by reducing the geometry distortion here at the complexity. The higher the value you can see, you'll have more of this glitch, which is a bit too harsh. So I'll just reduce it to about 30, 32, 30 looks good. That's a good range. Now for this VR digital glitch, remember you can also animate it a little bit more. You can refine some of these settings. So right here on the digital glitch, you can reduce the horizontal field of view. If you increase it, you'll have more of these spikes within the video. You can also adjust the vertical displacement of those particles. Again, you can also define how much of these particles you want to have on your clip by adjusting the master amplitude. So I'd make it about 50 such that it's a bit subtle. Again, you also want these particles to rapidly move around. And to do that, just add a keyframe for distortion evolution. Put it at the beginning. Go at the end of your duplicated clip. You can increase that number any value that you want depending on the speed. Remember to highlight on their two keyframes, put them on Bezier, space them, and if you preview it, they are always moving within your clip. And in that way, you're able to really customize this look. You can also add some colors to this, simply going to your effects and look for a HLS, drag and drop it on your clip, Remember, whenever you go to your effect controls, make sure the crop effect stays beneath every other effect. If in case you come across any issues, it's an issue with how you've layered your clips. Keep the VR digital above the crop effect. And now you can see our screen is back to normal. You can change the hue to bring in the colors that you want. So that's one way. If you don't like the colors, remember you can adjust this property Yeah, like that. That way you really have defined your own digital glitch and you have customized it how you like it. Now let's go to a second example. I'll show you using a square. Quickly duplicate that clip, trim the areas which you don't need this effect on. So I'll start it right on this shot whereby he's out of the car right there. I'll change the label color for this, give it a brown look. 
I'll add the Lumetri color once again so that we can have a definite contrast. Add it on that clip. I'll also add the crop effect and you can also add the VR digital glitch once again. So go to the effect controls, make sure the crop effect doesn't have precedence over the others and it stays below. I'll disable that effect for a sec. So for the Lumetri color, I'll increase the exposure. Uh, remember you can also play around with the saturation, you can desaturate the clip, you can make it more colorful and vibrant, uh, you can overall play with it. So I'll close this menu, go to the crop effect now. Now for the crop effect now I want us to create a square. Crop it from the left hand side like that, crop it from the right hand side and also crop it from above and below. Okay. Now we can go back to our VR digital glitch, disable the auto VR, create stereoscopic side by side. We will increase the color distortion and then we're going to reduce the distortion complexity. Yeah, that's good. Oh, okay. For the stereoscopic, remember we are using over and under and not side by side. And now if we play it, that's what it looks like. So if we preview it as it looks, that's good. Now we need these glitches to kind of keep on animating. Add a keyframe for distortion evolution. Add a keyframe at the beginning, push that keyframe to that end, go to the end, increase the distortion evolution, put it to about 40, squeeze that keyframe to the end. I can hold on both keyframes, put them on Bezier, and now we have a very good digital glitch happening. That's really good. Everything looks good at this point. I'd like us to add one more effect. You can add the wave warp. Put the wave warp on your clip. Make sure it stays above the crop effect as I showed you. If it gives you any issues, try placing it above these other effects, especially above the digital glitch. For the wave warp, you just need to change it to a square. Put the wave height at 10, the wave width at 1000, the direction at 0, and the wave speed at negative 0.1 such that we'll have some lines. Let me disable these other effects so that you can see the wave warp effect. So it brings this line, this horizontal line which runs through the clip. So that's the advantage of adding that. And now you can come back and tweak your other settings to your preference. Now you can tell there is a lot of work which goes into creating and refining this effect and that's why I've created some presets for you guys to use. I'll simply create an example here, I'll take another part of this clip, like right here, okay? If you don't want to do all that work, all you need to do, you need to import those presets, but first you need to duplicate your clip, identify a point in time you want to add this effect, about right here, okay? And then go to your effects. Once you've received the files, you need to go to your presets, to your effects bin, and right click to import presets. I have this folder right here. So all you need to do, click on it and open it. So here are the presets. For the first one, I'll add the rectangle with the black and white. Simply drag and drop it on your clip. And immediately you should have this glitch on your clip. Now there are some other variations for this too. I can also undo that and bring a glitch square with colors like that and you can see almost immediately you don't have to do any work and for this square i've also added some animations to it to really spice this up yeah so that's it from me today i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial as much as i did prepping it for you guys if you do end up doing one of these and replicating one of these effects that I've showed you, I'm happy to see the results. Tag me on my Instagram, share it to my DM. I'm very happy to see what you guys do with this one. Also, don't forget to give this video a like if you've enjoyed this content and learned something from it. My name is Danny James. See you in the next one. Peace.